Maternal and infant mortality is actually a success story in Afghanistan. The stats have improved year on year since the government has been in power. But those improvements really, if you look at the statistics overall, are centred around the cities. If you come out to village life here in very remote parts of the country, you're still looking at maybe one child in 10 will not survive its first birthday. And possibly one woman in 20 will not survive her first pregnancy. We had 11 children who did not survive. Some of our babies lived for one or two months and then they got sick and died. But most of them would only live for a few hours. They would be born and start breathing and we'd hope they'd make it. But then they'd seize up and die. Like everybody else, I used to give birth into piles of dirt from the cow shed and our children would never live very long. It was a terrible thing losing so many children. You can't really cope with that kind of feeling. There's so many common complications of pregnancy here that happen because of diet, because of lack of access to services, because of lack of knowledge about hygiene and sanitation. And every village we go to, we hear stories of people who've got family members who died um, trying to give birth. We teach people, women and men, the knowledge and essential practical skills that they need in their communities to prevent common birth problems, to deal with them when they happen, and we teach them how to know when you need to get help from a trained medical professional. Seven of my own children died. They got sick after they were born and died from tetanus or pneumonia. Until we started doing this training, the ladies would be giving birth anywhere, in the stable, the cow house, or around the back of the house on a pile of grass. We didn't know how to keep things clean. We'd always be carrying heavy loads when we were pregnant. We'd clean the baby's umbilical cord with black dirt. And we believed that we shouldn't eat fruit or vegetables because they could be harmful for us and the baby. The babies were dying because of things we were doing. But we didn't know they were wrong. We didn't know any better. Now we've learned a whole lot of things and it hits us where we've been hurting. In the villages, they don't have good access to health facilities, but prevention is better than treatment, and we are teaching them how to help each other. After the training, the women say, if we'd had these lessons in the past, maybe we wouldn't have lost our babies. I think I'm 35 or 40 years old, and I didn't think I'd have anyone to carry on my family name. After losing 11 babies, we'd lost all hope that we'd ever have a child that would survive. But then the birthing course came to the village, and my wife and I learnt what the problems had been. We'd been following the traditions from here, and my wife had been giving birth in very dirty conditions. Our babies had been getting tetanus from the dirt when they were born. I really did the things that we learnt from the trainers. They told us that we should try and eat something four times a day, and I thought, yeah, I can do that. And my brother took me to the clinic for prenatal checks. And I didn't carry anything too heavy. That was really good. This is my first child, Umed. Giving birth was a little bit difficult. I was in labor for two days. But then my family hired a car and took me to the clinic and my son was born there. Umed's alive and doing well today because his mum knew that when she was in obstructed labor, she had to get out, get help from a clinic. That wouldn't have happened if she hadn't been part of our training course. What his mum picked up on the training course saved his life. I feel very happy to be a mum. I think these lessons should spread everywhere. Everyone needs to know about these things. This time round, I gave birth on a clean sheet of plastic. We made sure our hands were clean, that the strings we used to tie the baby's cords were clean. We cleaned everything. And now, we have two living children, and I am very happy. This is my three-year-old daughter, Roya, and this is my baby son, Navid. I'm delighted and so full of joy to be a father. It's a really great feeling. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. What we've learnt here is the reason that my children are alive. The lessons you have given have made all the difference in the world. If you want to pick one thing that transforms lives the most, I think saving the life of a mother and baby is there. 
you can't be much more transformative than that. When you talk to people about the changes that have happened in their villages, when people tell you about losing a string of children and then having one successfully delivered and, and starting to grow up and be healthy because of the work that we've done with them. And that is transformation. If you look at a, a woman who has maybe lost half of her previous children, that's, you can look at it as, as a statistic, but that's a mum who's lost a lot of babies. Um, we can change that, so.